Yes, we're live. Survivor Know It Alls with Sophie Clark. Uh, while Rob is out there uh, gallivanting with the uh, the whatever the Survivor Roddy and uh, doing celebrities and interviews, I'm I'm here. You and I are here talking about this huge episode. What what a crazy episode, Sophie! Insane, absolutely insane. Um, I feel like this episode had more twists and turns than like most seasons do in the entire season. Yeah, there's, I, a, there's a lot of like, like stuff that happened. Yeah, I feel like we could just sit here and just like recap the episode and just kind of walk through what happened without well, that, writing any here. commentary. It would be that's just as interesting. I, it's true. Just like saying, just like say the things that happened. Yeah. Yeah. How, how are you doing? Uh, I'm I'm doing great. Uh, I really caught up on this season. You know, I was up on it in the beginning. In the middle, I was kind of. There was nothing, I think, that because the characters were all so great, there was nothing really drawing me towards it. There wasn't enough yeah. conflict. But this this finale, I, I kind of see why it deserves its place in uh, kind of the top seasons of Survivor. I've, I've been excited about this season basically pretty much for the entire thing. Well, uh, a lot uh, to talk about tonight. Adam's win, a shutout, you know, in a really emotional moment. Uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of great stuff coming up on the podcast that Rob has asked me to hit. You know, he is live there right now, probably doing red carpet interviews, very chic, very glam, mm -hmm. really, yeah. really illustrious red carpet interviews that I think they're going to have up tomorrow. Uh, there, there will be a, uh, you know, post, a post show uh, discussion with Wiggler if you, if you, you know, if you want that kind of thing. And then, of course, uh, interviews with, uh, with the finalists. And, and Adam, getting, getting Adam's firsthand discussion of why he won, how he won, and, and I guess the losing finalists as well, probably David in there, you know, all those people. But here tonight, we're, we're live with uh, Sophie Clark taking all your questions, tweet all your questions, I think hashtag RHAP probably, I don't know, I never, I never have to say this material, so it's a little bit foreign to me. Um, but Sophie, the big news tonight, obviously, Adam's win. What did you think? Is this, is this the right, is this a good end to the season? Let's start with like the big question. I, I think it's the perfect end to this season. Uh, and I don't just say that because of the reasons that were kind of stressed, I think, often in, in the live show tonight, which is, you know, Adam's story and the fact that he was able to right. kind of persevere and to lead really two lives at once uh, while out there on the island, I think are incredible. But even without that, like he, you know, was playing every single day. Um, he had to make, you know, many, many moves to get him to the end. I don't think he ever had anyone he could truly rely upon. I think right. his story is one um, of kind of grit and determination and doggedness uh, that is just, it was awesome to watch. And I have to say though, I, it was a little unexpected for me. I think going, even, in, I think that was other great part about it is that you, you couldn't predict it for a single moment, but going into the final tribal council, I wasn't sure Adam could win. I thought they all potentially had a chance to win and I was yeah. leaning towards Ken. Uh, so it was really incredible. What? I'm to sorry, what? You're leaning towards Ken? Like as the person you thought should win? Yeah, you know what? And I tweeted that out and I had somebody say to me tonight, man, you should delete that tweet. That's incredibly <laughs> embarrassing. Well, now, now you've just broadcast <laughs> to an even bigger audience. Um, yeah, but I think that the fact that Ken did not win really is this sign of, of you know, the shift in Survivor gameplay. Wow, I think to like Ken, valuing I people who know how to play Survivor. <laughs> No, but Ken, the fact, I think what I was so impressed with with Ken was the fact that oh, he made them to yeah, get yeah. out David, yeah. right? Julia's, Julia's, my girlfriend is very impressed with Ken as well, and, and I'm yeah. not that happy about it. <laughs> I mean, Ken's cute. Ken's cute. But do you, don't you agree that in a previous season of Survivor, somebody like Ken, who right. showed a lot of loyalty uh, and didn't piss anybody off, but then made that one single crucial move, you know, made the right, right move and the right decision at the right time, yeah. people would say, you know what? You only backstabbed once, and it was the time that you needed to backstab to win. Well, I think we um, saw that season last season, right? That was basically exactly <laughs> what happened in Korong, where you had a winner who kind of didn't do that much throughout the game, and um, then just made like a few really crucial moves right at the right time. You know, she won a bunch of immunities, yeah. also was very attractive, uh, and then ended up winning, uh, winning the whole show. And I think maybe there are comparisons with with uh, Michelle and Ken, but you know, Michelle didn't have that sense. I just got so much ego from Ken of just like, yeah. I'm, I'm so, so, you know, I'm so deep and profound. And I know that really resonates with, with my girlfriend, but, um, you know, maybe not as much with the, the survivor jury. Um, maybe Julie and I should be podcasting right now. <laughs> yeah. Talk about <laughs> how Ken, Ken was robbed. Um, so, no. but so a lot of people are, are, let's go, we'll get to Ken in a second, but I think we got to talk about Adam and a lot of people are saying, you know, sh shut out win, huge victory. Um, 
that they obviously like Adam as a winner, but there was a lot that he didn't do right, right? Adam, mm -hmm. Adam was on the wrong side of a lot of votes. You know, he kept on trying to get out David. He was repeatedly failed to get out David. Uh, he, he won two idols. He also misplayed both idols. So, yeah. you know, he was out of the gate. He was on the wrong side of the Mari vote. Uh, you know, he had that big blow up with uh, Taylor and his reward at the, you know, he made the huge mistake to mistrust, to trust Taylor uh, around the merge, you know, with their, with their famous late night conversation. And um, now, you know, what, what's your sort of, over, you overall think that he's still a really deserving winner. Well, so before we get to the reasons why he was good, I'd like to add one more into the reasons why I think he was not so good. Why I was, you know, I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around, you know, who is Adam as a winner. And one is that I got the sense throughout the season that people were a little turned off by him. That they didn't see him as very right, humble. Right. I have a very strong memory of a scene in the water when he was kind of bragging that, hey, I'm on top. Now you guys are on bottom. Uh, and I, I, I thought that was going to come back to haunt him. Right. That like people just maybe weren't taking to him as a person. Right. Uh, and I wonder if that was a little, I'm curious about why that was shown on TV. If I was reading a little bit too much into it, I have to believe that um, the reason that Adam won uh, is perfectly represented in his relationship with Jay. Right. We'll which is that, that Jay is somebody that he was an enemy of. Right. And Jay is somebody that he was kind of mean to and was trying to always get out. But if you stripped away the game on a person-to-person -person level, they both really liked each other. And right. I think that's something that this crew and this jury did better than anybody else has before, which is that they truly kind of, when it came to deciding the winner, they were able to separate those two things. They were able to separate the gamer from the personality or, you know, the, the looks or, or whatever it might be or their own, right. their own emotions. Okay. Um, so I, I think that there must be something in that for why for why Adam won. I'm curious to know your thoughts. I'm I'm definitely still wrapping my head around it. I was thinking David was going to win coming into this. You know, I think a lot of it. I, I really liked Adam. I, I was rooting for him through a lot of the season. I think you know, I think he played an aggressive game. I think you're right that this is a jury that's able to respect the gameplay and and like care less about the, um, you know, is this person my best friend at this at this exact moment? But but uh, you know, I. Uh, Part of any win, I think, is do, are you liked more than the people you're sitting next to? It's less a question of like, what's what did I do in like the absolute world of Survivor versus do I do they prefer me to these two jerks? And I had the sense throughout that you know the the kind of way you know that that basically what Adam said, right? Everyone thought of Hannah as the erratic flip flopper, and everyone thought of Ken as kind of like the stolid bozo and adam you know right at the beginning he's like i'm i'm between those you know i've played a very adaptive game but i've also shown loyalty and that was kind of my read on it was they liked him but even as much as they liked him they really didn't like them i think that's fair because i think we do have to acknowledge in this season that there are people that adam would have not beaten right oh, i yeah. have to imagine you know david would have beat him i'm not sure what would have happened with brett against adam but i, I think that i think that more than ever i'm I'm with you with it when i think of this final three and this is not to strip away anything for adam but i do think that you know ken and hannah came with real flaws and adam came as a solid person who never backed down on the things he had been saying for the last 39 days right. i'm playing hard i'm playing for my family um you know not making excuses for anything he did and not trying to build his game up into anything more than it wasn't right it was simply I you know I got through I made decisions uh, I made moves and I'm here now well I think uh, part of, I think you're right that like any you know I think kind of one thing you're sort of getting at is that element of storytelling that involves any win where like how do you convince the jury you know of your story yeah. and that you know and I think Adam I was I, I mean was like a really successful salesperson like you're saying or like you yeah. know like a politician who's able to hit one big theme and his theme was like i'm getting david out you know i need to get yeah. david out and then when, so when david actually was finally eliminated everyone applauded adam for making that yeah. move because he had been trying and trying and trying even though he had been failing and failing and failing now ultimately you can make the case hannah is actually the one who flipped ken you know adam yeah. is not the one who's in the water with ken she's not the one making the case and you could say you know chris gave adam all that credit for flipping ken you could really make the case that hannah was the one who finally actually did it you know and, yeah. and uh i mean Let's talk about Hannah's final tribal a little bit because I thought she had an amazing final tribal. I thought she had an amazing final tribal uh, as well. I, I thought she was going to be no votes, and she was no votes. Yeah. Um, not that there's she, anything wrong with that, Sophie. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. But I thought it was going to be more like a battle between 
Ken and Adam with the people saying to Hannah, you know, and you're here. And it definitely wasn't that. And I thought, right. you know, it was really striking and something that I didn't ever even realize was Michelle's comment to her of Hannah, you're on the, the, the right side of the votes all the right. time. Every single time, except Michaela, right, yeah. What I will say about Hannah is that I feel like in Final Tribal Council, she tried to reframe her game for the jury. And I think that because of who she is and the anxiety she has um, and the way that she speaks, I think the the uh, approach she took to reframing the game wasn't congruent with the story she was trying to tell. She was trying to tell a story saying, hey, I was, you guys are all thinking that I was a flip flopper, right. that I was unreliable, but actually I had all of these really great moves and I was, everything was thought out and you're all there because of me, right? She had the story in her head. She, I don't think she executed it very well because she was kind of frantic she was kind of butting in all over the place in the right. final tribal. She was so eager to get the story out that she didn't take back and give people a moment to kind of process what she was saying. I think if she had simply done it a little more slowly and said, you know, I'm right. going to say some things right now that some of you might not believe. Yeah. Uh, and, I, you know, kind of kind of let it sink in more slowly with them and really reframe and make them look at her in a whole different manner. I think instead she kind of tried to beat through a wall that needed to kind of, I don't know, be walked around. Well, you really uh, reframed my think. way of seeing that whole tribal council. I think you're absolutely right. I, you know, when I, when I was watching it, I was thinking, uh, you know, Hannah's doing this amazing job. She's hitting these points. She's making the case again and again. Hey, I made these moves. I got these people out. You know, Adam, Adam was often on the wrong side of the votes. He would go along with what I said. You know, she was saying all these things, but you're absolutely right. You know, she wasn't, I mean, she was saying it in this kind of like wild, interrupting yeah, way. Right. Yeah. And, and not in a way that would really let her resonate. That's really, that's, that's great. Yeah. So we done? Uh, <laughs> that was, that was good. Good work. Good work. All right. Yeah. Have a good night. Um, no, but that's, that's a really interesting point. Cause I, I, and you know, I also think there's an element of, you know, Yes, it's possible to reframe the way that the jury thinks about you, but ultimately they're coming in with a very, you know, sharp perception. You've never been on the jury, luckily for yourself, uh, but having been on the jury, I know that, you know, the jury talks a lot about the finalists, you know, and they come in with a really discreet perception of who everybody is. And I think that's, you know, probably why, you know, Chris had that idea that, that Adam was responsible for getting uh, David out, not Ken, right? Because... Adam, they know they think of Adam as the guy who wants David out. They think of Adam as the guy who keeps yeah. on trying to align with them to get rid of this other huge threat. And they th they don't think of Hannah that way. They've got a perception of Hannah, and they have a perception of Ken as the people who are loyally sticking by yeah. David's side. And I I think you know that's just been like two weeks of them just you know fuming over how dumb those people are and then they come into final tribal i think it's going to be a real hard sell and i agree that with, with you that it's possible but i think it's a real hard sell to really flip someone's perception like that I, th I think you're bringing up a really great point because even though in final tribal council they seem to value this ability to adapt you're yeah. right that in the end they actually rewarded the person who came to the end with the people that you always expected him to Right, you right. always expected yeah. him to backstab David and to get to the end with two people less likely to win, right? right. Whereas Hannah and um, Hannah and Ken, right, did the unexpected. So if you're looking at them and saying which one of the three of you succeeded in what I thought you were planning to do, it would have been it, it would be it would be Adam, right? right? Everybody else is like, well, Ken, you know, you didn't succeed. You're supposed to be this loyal guy. You're not sitting next to the people you said you were going to. Right. Hannah, you know, you you didn't sit next to people you're going to. But Adam, he said this from the beginning. He said he was going to get here. He said he was going to get out all these threats. And Adam's here, right? right? And like, no matter what the the path to that um, outcome was, Adam was the one sitting there with the outcome. Right. Well, let's talk about like speaking of the outcome. The big question, even throughout you know throughout the finale, uh, and then certainly even into the final tribal itself. I thought it was amazing that the big question, you know, the, the final tribal was as focused was more focused on David than it was on any of the actual finalists. You know, it was all about who tried to get David out and who didn't try to get David out. Um, the uh, you know same with you know the issue through the finale. When is the right time to get David out? Uh, you know, became a really big question in the final tribal. Adam says to Hannah terrible move not trying not getting david out in at the final five you know i know i was shouting at my screen at the final five is there any argument that you can make that hannah i mean other other than the eliza orleans well the results are that they did get david out at four <laughs> is there another argument to be made for keeping david is does hannah have a point of well if i flipped on ken at five then you know maybe i'm not here no I 
I think, I think Hannah in a vacuum might have a point, right? And one of the things I was writing down in this episode was how often Hannah would say to somebody, and it happened right in the beginning, Hannah would say, uh, well, that's your opinion. But there's mm. some, you know, I, I have a different idea. Uh, right. And I think Hannah fell into this trap a lot where perception is reality on Survivor. Right. And if the whole jury thinks that David is a threat and should be gotten out early, even if you have this amazing right. explanation for why actually you can leave David until the final four, right? People are not going to match their you know, perceptions to what becomes your reality. Everybody's right. perception was David's a threat. He, he should be gotten out early. Uh, and so I think that even though Hannah proved that that was not necessary, that David could be get, gotten out later, I don't think she managed to kind of shift everybody else. And I think it just proves to you that, you know, more than anything, you have to understand what the jury is thinking, who right. they respect, and play to that, you know, and, and, and play to that belief and that understanding, even if you're sitting there thinking, God, you know, Jay's an idiot. I don't think he's a threat in this game at all. It's like on my season when, you know, I could tell that everybody thought Brandon should win. Just because right. I don't think Brandon's worthy of winning a survivor doesn't mean that I shouldn't act um, in response to what I believe is the prevailing belief of the tribe. Yeah. And I think, I, I think that's where Hannah really went wrong. That's a great call. And I think that's what's, you know, what makes Survivor so interesting and exciting as a game, but also so sort of hard to play and predict is that every single season, what matters is what the jury wants to matter. It's not, there's no absolute question of like how you once someone succeeded at Survivor. You know, some seasons it's trust, some seasons it's physical competition, some seasons it's being a game changer. And, you know, that's why I've been thinking a lot about like the big moves era of Survivor that we're in where, you know, they keep hitting this point. Oh God, big moves, big moves and moves. And I, I've said a bunch of times throughout the you know this podcast well don't make a big move if it's not a good move but if your whole jury thinks making big moves is what's important then you do have to make big yeah. moves that's a really good point that's, um, a, that's a really great point because i'm guilty of that too i'm guilty of rolling my eyes at the big move thing but you're right and this was a jury who cared about that stuff it did and adam adam had a lot of flashy moves not all of them really ended up mattering uh you know certainly both of his idle plays were wrong but they were <laughs> they were big you know they were they were uh, spectacular! And he had his, his reward steal that he gave up. You know, he had a lot of uh, of big moments. What do you think? We have to talk about you know the big question of of Adam's sort of really heartfelt reveal at the end of the at the, at the It's so funny because I you know couldn't help but think about Jeremy in, in, in Cambodia, yeah. where uh, just because I'm always thinking about him, but also like here specifically, you know, yeah. it was the last comment to the last question. And it was a really similar question too, where you know in Cambodia, Kelly Wentworth uh, asks the finalists, you know, how, how have you taken advantage of your second chance? How have you grown? And David here asked, how how have you evolved? And in both cases, the uh, the losing finalists said they made it about themselves, right? They said, yeah. I'm, you know, here's how I've grown. They've answered the they answered the question here. Here's how I've grown. Yeah. You know, I'm less robotic, and then you know, or, or I'm more robotic, as in Hannah's case. And uh, and then then both uh, Adam and Jeremy gave these really powerful, heartfelt answers about um, their family and about it wasn't about them; it was about their family. Do you think a that that did influence the vote, and b that it should influence the vote? Uh yeah, there's so much to unpack here. Um, I mean, one of the questions that's just on my mind to, to add to your A and B is, I'm not sure, was Adam always planning to bring that up? Because right, he that's, had an that's opportunity my question too. Yeah. Earlier in the thing, you know, when Jay was talking to talk about it and he didn't. And right. so it's kind of strange to me that, you know, the last question, sure, it was there. And I, I'd be curious to know if Jeremy always planned to bring it up as well. Um, but I, I definitely- he, he did, he did. He did. Yeah, yeah. so I don't know. Adam, it seemed to be a lot more spur of the moment, but it's a question that doesn't influence anything, I don't think, but I'm curious. Yeah. Um, regarding what were your first two questions, does it uh, does it influence things? I would say definitely in this tribal council, I was writing down notes, guessing whoever was gonna vote for. And as each person spoke, at first I had people voting for Ken. I thought kind of maybe some of the older people, Taylor even seemed to kind of respect Ken. I had Will voting for Hannah. But by the end, after the combination of Jay, Chris, and David closing it out, I switched all of my early guesses right. to Adam. So and before so the Adam speech even happened, you, you did? Before, well, it kind of as it built, I, yeah. I continued to switch over. And so I don't know if that is just the editing on TV that changed my perception or if that may be a reflection of kind of maybe some sentiments of the jury as well. Right. Um, 
so I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people switch their vote. I would also wouldn't be surprised if maybe some people were planning to vote for Ken to throw him a vote, right. knowing right. that he wouldn't win. And then after hearing Adam's story, thinking my vote is so much more worthwhile going to this guy than to somebody I know who's not going to win. Like, I, right. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not sure if it kind of changed the outcome of the game. Uh, with your question about whether or not it should change or it should matter, I, right. I think it should. I think you can't. I think Ken even said it tonight that we're all people yeah. out there, and you can't play Survivor in a vacuum. And I think you do. You know, if you have people like Hannah saying, "Look how much I've overcome. I'm right. such a nerdy, quirky girl." Why can't Adam say, "Look how much I've overcome. I've been out here my, while my mom is dying of cancer. You know, struggling." I think it just it also kind of puts you in context. Um, yeah. And just in the way that, you know, Zeke um, can be put in the context of, uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a gay man. Um, I don't think he would have done as much, really, like maybe Brett or something. Everybody has their story to tell. And I think it's unfair to not allow Adam to let everybody know who he is at this moment in time while he's playing this game uh, to ensure that they understand, like, him as a player fully. Uh, yeah. I but, agree with both sides of what you said. You know, the first being how remarkable it is that Adam – you know, uh, was out there, you know, I'm, I was breaking down with, with nothing going on yeah. in my life at home. And, you know, <laughs> to have Adam, to think of Adam, you know, carrying this burden with him and yet still able to focus so well and like trans, you know, to sort of like transmute all that pain he was feeling into, into like game plan. Yeah. Focus, I thought was just really a phenomenal. And I think, I absolutely think that should, you know, be go into the jury's consideration. The fact that he had this huge burden on him that, you know, for all, almost anybody would just completely take them out of the game and he was able to overcome that and and uh, I, th I think that's amazing the other the other and, and the other side of it too which is yeah you know ultimately the jury is voting for a person i mean i remember jt said to me before i went out and played again you know the jury has to want you have to make the jury want you to win you know and so yeah. it's not just you know there's, there's no way to stack the the list of someone's strategic pros and cons and somehow divorce that from who they are. I, you know, Rafe Judkin said something like, you know, my you know personality is like strategy is personality, and I think that's yeah. really really true. Well, I think what we're agreeing on, without saying it explicitly, is that what Adam did there and why it matters is nothing to do with what some people might call the mom card. The reason what he did matters is because it reflects on him. It doesn't reflect on his you know. Um, how much he deserves the money, how much his family needs the money. To me, the heartstring that that pulls in the jury, and not the heartstrings, but the levers that that pulls in the jury is more about what that means for Adam as a person and what he must have had to overcome to play this game more than, oh, I want to give it to this kid so he can like give money to cancer research. Yeah, you know? I think that's a really great distinction. I think that it, it, it provides depth. Now you, but your tears during your finale, they were all crocodile tears, right? No. You played the tears. Card. I got. I have emotions. Yeah. All right. Um. So. So. Uh, what about Ken? Ken? Ken was pretty terrible. Huh? I, I would love to have your perspective on Ken because I was. I was totally yeah, wrong. So I, mean, dreamy, I, I think so I just. Dreamy. I had a moment of earning just a ton of respect for Ken because I didn't believe it was going to happen to see him backstab David. Right. And I would love to hear your perspective, particularly because I think you were on seasons where the winners were maybe closer to Ken's than they were to Adams, right? With Jeremy and. Um, Jeremy I actually think team. Adam's win is very Jeremy esque. You know, maybe not as okay. not as professional as Jeremy was, not as like flawless. But you know, yeah. he had his meat shields, right? His whole strategy mm -hmm. was based around meat shields. He had his two idols. He misplayed them. Jeremy correctly played them. You know, um, but 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 you know, there, I, I kind of think there's there's some relation. I mean, I think I agree that like from perception, Jeremy is more of a Ken. He's like this big, handsome, you know, rugged dude. But I think in terms of his strategy, which was like let me you know become less of a threat than the mm -hmm. threats around me. But but I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I, but don't you agree that there was a season? If this was ten years ago, Ken would have won, right? I mean, I really think with the call wrong jury, like, oh, you know, if you yeah. get a bitter jury, it could have happened. You know, a bitter jury could have hated Adam. You know, I mean, in some ways, actually, Adam, I think, was benefited from the fact that he repeatedly failed to vote out David. You know, which was that a lot of the blood was on Ken and Hannah's hands. You know, the bread vote, the Sunday vote, right? Like, the, Adam could could rightly say, like, hey, I wanted you. I didn't want to vote you guys out. But you're you're saying right now, Stephen, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the difference between Ken winning and Adam winning is a bitter jury. I would no, argue no, no, I'm not it's actually, it, yeah. it's actually uh, not to tip a hat to CBS, but it's actually 
a difference in generation and it's the millennial versus Gen X difference. And right. the fact that I think 10 years ago, I think Survivor was a show where somebody like Ken would win and values that Ken you know, espoused would be you know, would be honored and would be rewarded. Um, to me, this is a shift in culture and a shift in generations. Uh, and maybe that's just within the context of Survivor and not in the in the larger world. Uh, but I don't think it's the difference of bitter or not. I think it's the difference of you know the characteristics of the jury and what they're ready to reward a million dollars with. But I I don't think it's a generational thing. I mean, again, I really think Michelle is 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 not too dissimilar from. I don't think it's a time thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, from 2000 to today. Well, but 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 Michelle was 2000, you know, 15. Okay, but global warming happens, and every so often it gets cold out. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, so we're, we're you know, let's talk about David because he's you know was kind of the the straw that stirs the drink, as as Rob likes to say. He was you know he was really the focus of the episode, even when he was out. The fin the yeah. final tribal council was all about David. Um, let's. Oh my gosh, we have so much to cover. We're like just burning through time here. Michelle's dress too with that thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk quickly. Let's talk really quickly about David, and, we'll, and then we'll get to we'll get to questions. Uh, shortly, but um, let's talk. Let's talk quickly about David. Uh, so I think I said this in the last podcast, and I'm pretty sure I said about David. David, in many ways, reminded me of Tony as this super scrappy player, you know, willing to adapt at any moment, um, always playing on his maybe not on his heels, but always playing on his toes. Um, and I think a good example of that in this episode was the idol thing. Right? It's kind of unclear yeah. why he did it. It's like such a crazy thing to do. He executed it as if he was like, you know, 10 years old and like in a, in a you know, <laughs> playing like capture the flag. Where did they get friends. glue? Like uh, know, exactly. Julia pointed out, like where did, they, where did the glue come from? Mm -hmm. He was playing with the kind of creativity that made me smile when I, you know, when I was watching Tony. And yeah. I, I wish that David would have made it just like one step further because I would have loved to see the like David and Goliath season of Tony versus the David. David and Goliath. Yeah, David good. and Goliath. Because uh, his name is David. Is that, yeah, I wish Tony said it was Goliath. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but Tony's what nickname is Goliath, isn't it? It's like Tony Goliath uh, Flacos. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, I love David's game throughout. You know, at the, or at the start of the season, I actually was very frustrated with David. I felt like he was like Mr. Big Moves, like doing all this like big flashy stuff almost because he could. He had to. I don't know. I think some of the stuff out of the gate he didn't have to do, like playing his idol like for Jessica really oh, early yeah. on was not necessarily a great a decision. Um, I didn't love some of his plays right out of the gate. You know, he, him running all over the Gen X beach yelling, I trust you to everybody that he saw. Uh, you know, it, no, he's, I think this is why he's like Tony. He had to. It's the only way. He's so anxious. It was the only right. way that guy was going to play the game. Yeah, I think that's true. He was like channeling his anxiety into yeah. this like energy but it seemed at the time like he was someone who knew the kind of game he wanted to play but didn't necessarily know how to play that game you know and then by the end of the season he was playing the game he wanted to play and even yeah. more and i just loved yeah. watching because i think there was real there was that evolution there you know i, don't, I mean i don't like whatever i was nervous before yeah. now i'm not nervous now you're going to go back yeah. to your normal life you're going to be nervous again but in yeah. terms of his growth as a survivor player uh you know i thought it was really phenomenal to watch what did you think? I would have been really curious actually to see David in the final because after all this talk mm -hmm. of David being, you know, unbeatable and he's the biggest threat, I found it very interesting how self-aware all the contestants were mm -hmm. um, at one of those tribal councils where, where basically everybody was saying to David, your story's too good. Like they were, they were seeing David not necessarily as a player, but like right. they were already seeing his story right. before yeah. the final tribal council. And I actually wondered if that was like he was peaking too early. Like he obviously peaked too early to be a threat, and he was what out, but almost his right. story peaked too early. And I feel I wonder if by the final tribal council it would have seemed kind of cliched and not genuine. And I wonder if he would have gotten kind of bitter in people's mouths or stale. Right. It was like too over determined, and so they would have voted for somebody yeah. else. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, again, like everything depends on who who is up there with him. I mean, I think he probably would have beat the three remaining contestants, right? Um, but also, like one thing I really liked about David was that he seemed to really foster genuine connections with people. So it doesn't necessarily seem like yes, he had this stellar resume, but it wasn't just a resume. He also was this really genuine guy who people seem to really connect to. I, I totally agree. I, I took 
not took offense, that's the wrong language, but um, when Adam was going around saying that, uh, you know, all these idiots out here are calling kind of Ken and Hannah idiots for being with David, I thought that was not paying enough respect to the work David had want, had done to right. gain those two under right. him. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's been the big like question all season and is often a question in Survivor. Is the guy the mastermind a genius or are all of his followers morons? I think it's probably, you know, it's, it's he's Some a genius for making them morons. Too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's talk. You mentioned right before the show the legacy advantage. Uh, what did you think of the legacy? Obviously, it basically had no impact on the game at all. But what did you think of the advantage as a twist? We, we found out what it is that Ken got to be immune. Or the holder of the legacy advantage got to be immune. Uh, what did you think of it as a twist? And what did you think of um, are there ways to improve it? I liked it as a twist, actually. I liked that it was so shocking to everyone. I liked that it, it created this tie to the jury and seeing Jessica's reaction to it and make kind of seeing her kind of experience that loss and that, you know, I'm being voted out again. I, I was excited. I, I think I had a lot of possibilities. What I really wanted to happen, I don't know about you in that episode, was I really wanted Ken to win the immunity of a challenge. Yeah. And then have like this cool someone. moment. Exactly. Yeah. Where you could give it to somebody. Uh, and so I think that there was actually a lot of ways that that could have played out. We didn't see the most interesting way, um, but I like the idea. I'm worried that the legacy part of it is now going to be expected, and so I wonder yeah. they're going to have to vary what's inside. Yeah. Um, well, Jeff but, had this interesting question to Chris at the at the um, at the finale, right? Which was, how much are players thinking of mystery twists that? that don't exist. And I don't know about, you know, I think in Cambodia, we were a little bit aware of it. Um, the idea that like something could happen that we hadn't seen, we, you know, we'd had the Tyler Perry idol, certainly in token chains. I never, you know, I knew, I figured there might be an idol. I never thought of a mystery twist. I don't know about how, how you felt in South Pacific, no. but like we didn't think at all about like the mystery twist that might sudden, that suddenly like someone's going to get a message in a bottle that allows them, you know, a uh, well, this, right? Like some magic yeah. immunity, like that never crossed our minds. I mean, what do you think of the whole concept of that? Because there's, they're getting, like, there were a bunch, right? There was the reward steal this season. There was, there was the legacy advantage. Well, I mean, what do you think of the whole idea of these like mystery twists? Um, I mean, I, I can't influence production, so I can't say if they can do it or they can not do it. But I do think it has a huge impact on the game. Um, and I think that what everybody is calling the evolution of Survivor being kind of the shift from normal alliances uh, to what do you call them? Uh, alliance. Tr uh, trust, trust busters. Yeah, now they're trust clusters. I think a lot of people are, are acting as this, as if that's like a natural evolution of the game. I think it's very much in response to things like this and the fact that right. if you go out there and you have all of these unknowns, you can't form, you can't base your strategy off of creating a known entity, right? right. Because a known entity is actually now never a known entity because right. one of your Someone's core got something. members yeah. might suddenly be gone. And so I think that, that that is part of the reason why you're seeing these seasons where everybody has to make relationships with everybody else, that they're shifting every from episode to episode to episode, because when you can't rely on the stability of your environment, kind of cr trying to create a stability within a group seems kind of fake and it's it's just going to be disrupted. Um, and my season, for instance, I felt like our right. strategy was so perfect. And the only thing that was making us feel like it was going to go wrong was the fact that we had Redemption Island. And I right. knew that we just had one variable that was going to throw a wrench. I could see how if we had four more, you know, our strategy of trust and loyalty and blah 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 would have would have never held up throughout. Yeah, the what if Rick had the legacy? We might have. We, I might be talking to Rick right now, Rick Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or even if what if Rick had feared that the other side had the legacy? Yeah. Right. It's just it's too much. Yeah, we can't have Rick fearing anything. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, it's interesting that you say that. Um, it adds a lot of randomness, which I think is great as a viewer. Like, we, as a viewer, we love big moves. And certainly as a podcaster, we love big moves. There's a lot more to talk about. You know, as a viewer, we love uh, some random twist that comes out. It's something to talk about. It's something to write about. You know, we get to have opinions here. Do we like it? Do we not like it? Um, you know, even even the freedom to, like, reject a, a, a twist is, like, a great a great joy for us. It's just, like, more stuff to, to analyze. Um, but as a player, it's terrible. You know, certainly as a, as a strategic player, it's terrible. Yeah, and I think it also breaks up, and probably in a good way for the for CBS, it breaks up the story of the show into single episodes. Like when you, if you were to ask me right now, what was the arc of the show? I would struggle, right? Because you have Hannah. I mean, I couldn't even tell you who the alliances were at one yeah, point. Whoever had them, but that's you the know, mark of a great show, right? I, I guess so, it, because. 
But at the same time, like I kind of miss that the story of the season. I, I actually could not, and I have a bad memory, I could not tell you the story of the season. I think every episode individually was wonderful, right? Because you had some twist that happened and some flip that happened. Um, but I think, I think as a viewer, you lose um, kind of seeing, seeing kind of true relationships form in a deep way, evolve. Like I almost think for myself, the seeing the Ken blindside David yeah. was one of the more emotional elements of the show. And he's that so happened. Yeah, because he's so handsome yeah. um, and he had a shirt off, but that happened <laughs> because he had met David 39 days prior and he had been working with David for 39 days. And there was a, you know, a temporal element to their relationship right, right. that you didn't see in many of the other blind sides. And so yeah. I think there's pros and cons. Right. Now, I mean, and you, but you think that was the right decision for Ken or do you think that Ken was actually, actually, we didn't really talk about that. Do you think that was actually a wrong move for Ken to do because then he no longer has that argument hey, I'm the loyal guy, or do you think I'm going to lose to him? I got to do something here. I, I think it's the second one. I, I, I've been thinking now more about Ken as you've been talking. Um, <laughs> <How rude. laughs> and thinking about like all the parallels to coach. And I think a lot of the reasons Ken didn't win, right, are the same reasons coach didn't win. And, right. you know, kind of the empty, vapid nature of the words trust, honor, and loyalty. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, maybe Ken was between a rock and a hard place because in a way Ken did the thing that coach was never able to do, which is, you know, he said, he he, he, he went back on those things and said, my number one alliance is my is my girl. He, he had a right. cohesive story behind his trust, honor, and loyalty, whatever. Right. But I, I think he was in a no-win situation there given the jury. I also thought Ken did a pretty, yeah, I agree with you. I think the jury went in with a pretty negative impression of Ken. I also thought Ken did a kind of bad job of articulating you know, I, there was that moment after Chris's speech when Ken speaks up, right? And he says, like, how dare you think that he had the gumption? I love that he used the word gumption, you know. Maybe he is a Gen X or uh, <laughs> that he had the gumption to do that, to make, to cause me to flip. And I thought that was such an interesting question. Yeah. Like, I, I just think Ken expressed it kind of like he kind of mumbled it and he didn't really speak up, you know. But I thought like that got to the heart of so much of what we talk about, which is who gets credit. Yeah. You know, if Ken flips, Adam gets credit. You know, if Hannah makes a move, she's going rogue. But when yeah, Adam exactly. makes a move, it's the right move. You know, like how do you make that? That how do you make the case that like you deserve like that I deserve credit for someone else's move? It, how? It's impossible. Tell me how, right? I need to know if I go back. <laughs> I need to know too. I mean, I just wonder if commentary and Survivor should no longer be about the move itself, but about how somebody is able to get people to perceive a move in a certain way, and like what is the. But you're the queen that? of that. You're the queen of 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 you know saying, going to the jury at the end and saying no, like this, you know, coach was my dumbass girl, right? Yeah. Like all these and moves that, you thought were that, his. And that is why my argument about Hannah, I think is strong, which is right. that Hannah tried to do that, right? She tried to do this thing to, to reclaim these moves as her own and to reframe the whole story, but she did it. She didn't, she didn't sell that. She wasn't able to even, right. it's like a meta on top of a meta, right? Like she wasn't able to do even that in a way that was believable to other people. It's interesting. I think it usually goes in one direction. And I think with Ken and, uh, David, it kind of went in the other direction, right? I think usually people are are more easily able to attribute um, a move to somebody when it's very apparent. And I think the fact that Chris was attributing Ken not doing something to David, right, is a is a right. When can you think of the last time somebody did that? Yeah, attribute, I mean, it's a manipulator, right? It doesn't happen that often. A trip to actually a trip. To, to, yeah. to manipulator. Yeah, because you're right. I mean, certainly when you have someone who is sort of, uh, you know, as sort of archetypal as Ken is. Um, well, let's get into some questions. Crazy season. Uh, because I know we're already running super long. Such an exciting finale. So much to talk about with this. You know, uh, we haven't even scratched the surface. We haven't even talked about the finale, you know, or the, or the reunion. Uh, well, when we go offline, we'll just keep talking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, first question, Anessa Sarah wants to know, what buddy? What buddies are pro? Are is is Jeff watching this show with? LOL. No. Sorry, uh -oh. I was LOLing. Oh. Um, so at the, at the reunion, well, I don't Jeff, know. Jeff, Tyler Jeff Perry, right? Who uh, you know were like so upset about the the David being the writer that that was cast. Oh, it was probably Cochran. Does Cochran want to go back? Is that what that's about? I don't know. I don't know. But it would. But surely Cochran would would have you know contextualized himself as a as a writer. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, you, what's the, what's the, you want to take the next one from Ryan Sapia? 
I, where are you seeing these questions? Sorry, I don't see that. You see there's little three oh, windows? I, no. yeah, you can click on the other one in the window and you'll okay. see the question. Brian Fabia asks, how do you think Adam was able to get every vote? It was looking dicey. We kind of talked about this, right? We, I, I believe that some people could have switched their vote. And I think that towards the end, there was a lot of Adam momentum that built. What do you think? I thought Michelle was going to vote for Hannah. She gave her that softball of like, didn't you really vote the right time every single time? I thought for sure she was a Hannah vote. Um, but... No, no, apparently not. Maybe, you know, you never know. I, I'm, I always think that, like, ultimately the winner is determined before the final tribal actually happens. But they, they, maybe there's a little bit of variation in who in the votes. Uh, and, and I think, you know, may, maybe that happened here. Maybe, maybe for whatever reason. Um, Kirsten wants to know, why do they not have opening and closing comments at final tribal anymore? So, okay. uh, I would take a bet that that's probably um they just get them to do what they would have said in question form because i think that the, the opening and closing statements were never that good and usually there's a question that's asked that basically they get to answer and what they would have said in the opening or closing i think yeah, the first question did it in this case i think that's right you know it's a lot it takes up a lot of time uh you know you're hitting the same points anyway in the q a you know it's kind of no one really cares but it, the problem i think and then it could think it creates a possible problem or is if, if they say something in the opening that gets referred back to or that provides context and you yeah. have to show the whole thing so i think it's just and you, then you show one you have to show all three so i think just not having them makes it easier um uh, take uh, you want to get jason uh, yeah, sure. jason at final four should david and adam have agreed to vote for hannah um david and adam. why no i guess that would have caused that's interesting actually it's an interesting it's an what? interesting pitch because we, you know hannah is voting for david um and you know ken is well i guess ken was voting for david here so it would have been a rock a uh, fire making but maybe, maybe they thought ken was voting for adam so by the two of them voting for hannah it actually would have uh but then then in the revote right hannah is gonna flip on on uh on adam so yeah it worked out well for adam right no reason for adam to switch his vote yeah it's a bad idea ken or whoever asked that question uh uh danius b wants to know can jury members talk among themselves after questions no no uh okay <laughs> why did hannah not get any credit for flipping ken's vote at final three could hannah have received a vote if Chris gave credit to her. Why did Hannah deserve credit? I Look, I, I think Adam was the right winner. I, I don't think Hannah, you know, I, I was, again, I was shouting at the screen and all, at the final five when she voted off Brett. Uh, but I do think there's a case to be made that Hannah, was, you know, and it, it's the case Hannah kind of made, and I agree with you, not as well as she could have, but that Hannah was the one getting the votes done. Hannah's sitting there. She did get the votes, all the votes she needed. Um, you know, if, if she, if she, if Hannah had voted off David at the final seven, like Adam wanted, there's a very good chance that neither, that certainly not Adam, right, and certain, and possibly not Hannah would have even made it to the final tribal. If David goes out at seven and then Jay at six, as he did, then Adam is the biggest threat left in the game with two more tribal councils to go. It's pretty unlikely, right, if that's the case. Like why? So then you have who's left in the game? You have Brett, you have Sunday, and you have a pissed off Ken. You know, there's every reason for those three to vote out Adam, and then you know maybe they keep Hannah, maybe they don't keep Hannah. I think you could really make a strong case um, that if Hannah wasn't making the move she was making, if she was making Adam's moves, that that neither of them would have been there in the end. Yeah, what Stephen said. Uh, <laughs> that said, <laughs> that said, I still I still am Team Adam in thinking that she probably should have gone for for David earlier. You know, I actually think for Hannah it's a better move to vote out David than it is for Adam. Adam's a threat. He wants another threat around. But for Hannah, who was less of like a, a big target, I think maybe it didn't make more sense. So, I mean, it's it's, it's tricky. Uh, Randy Knupp wants to know, overall, this season has been looked at very highly. What was it about this season? Cast, twists, editing, other? Cast, twists, editing, other. Um, I got to go with the cast on this one, right? I, I mean, there were so many likable people on this cast. Uh, for me, it was difficult because I couldn't quite figure out who I wanted to root for because there were too many options. Um, but there was the, you know, it, it, it didn't make it so depressing as that World of Parts season, or not World of Parts, uh, what, what was it? One, no, World of Parts, where you just didn't want anybody to win, right? And it's kind of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just like angry making. I think, especially, I don't know. I think in 
th this time, I think people are looking for something uplifting. I think the cast was great. I think something about the millennials versus Gen X worked really well. I think the millennials kind of elevated the gameplay often. Uh, yeah. And the Gen Xers kind of, you know, worked to keep up with them. And the Gen Xers that, you know, we didn't need to, to have around kind of got out of the way early. We yeah. didn't need to see Paul that much more. We didn't need to see CC, CC that much more. Um, yeah. 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 Mar Mari, I miss from Millennials, but I know Mari was a big loss early on. I mean, she was my winner pick after the set. You know, she was my winner pick too. Yeah. What a bummer. What a bummer. What might have been? Um, MX Golem wants to know: Is Survivor more of a career for Ozzy than for Rob Sester Nino? Uh, this is a, so. This is this gets into you know the big the big reveal of the new season Survivor Game Changers. We had a few Game Changers on the screen. Uh, we had who it was Tony. Ozzy, Suri, Sandra, um, Malcolm. Malcolm. They mentioned Michaela. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. Uh, uh, but you know, they they should have flat cowboy. Oh, cow beast mode cowboy. Uh, what do you think? This is this is huge. Survivor game changers. What a what a great theme, Sophie. What what do you think? Game yeah, changers. They're changing the game. What? What? No, I'm excited to see game changers. I think game changers. Right. It's like. You know how like evolution probably goes on one of those like things that goes like this? I feel like right now we've been kind of evolving, but what happens when you put 20 game changers all together? It's what will, like... I, it would be interesting to find out if you did put if you did put 20 game changers all together. <laughs> is is Ozzy a game changer? You played with Ozzy before. Ozzy, I think, does earn the status of a game changer. I would the move I would give to him would be the, you know, voting himself out, basically. Oh, that's interesting. So it can be terrible moves as well. It's like literally changing the game no matter what the actual impact is. No matter what, exactly. Basically dying on screen. On screen. <laughs> well, that's what Caleb did. That's, that's uh, exactly. yeah. Um, oh, so that was your point. Uh, yeah. well, and and uh, I'm very excited. They showed a brief clip of JT as a, as a game Whoa. changer. I know. I know. All if it's true. Crazy if it's true. Uh, it would be, that would be crazy. I, I think JT, people were tweeting at me, is JT a game changer? I think absolutely. First ever yeah. perfect game. First ever He's shut out in the final two. Season. I don't understand these questions. They're all game changers. They're all, yeah, they are all game changers by definition. They're all, they're all game changers. Um, you want to take this next question from Zavlaw? Yeah. Was this the best reunion ever? I was thinking it was a very good, good reunion. Reunion. You know what the most impressive part of the reunion for me was? Was the fact that Jeff rolled off his tongue the name of the like four moms on stage, which included like Cece and some of the old people who voted that very early. I thought it was yeah. a good tip of the hat without speaking to them. Without ever actually tipping his hat. No, I, I agree that it was a great, um, great reunion. No you know, no questions from, you know, 10 year olds in the audience, no yeah. like random celebrities from other CBS shows, you know, really focused on the players and how the game mattered to them. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And I think that, you know, I think Adam's uh, story was really touching. I think the stand up to cancer thing was, you know, a very genuine uh, moment on stage. I think often when the reunions can feel forced and like, what is this two bit thing we can do before the commercial? Um, I think it was, it was worth watching. It was. It was really compelling. And we got it. this sort of like, yeah. and I also thought like the, the Figgy Taylor moment was handled. I was like, you know, like, like couldn't wait for the red meat, like, yeah. ooh, like what a scandal. But it actually was handled pretty well. I thought Jeff yeah. did a really great job. And I thought both Figgy and Taylor kind of did a, you know, although Taylor, of course, was doing his uh, classic wolf laugh. <laughs> Anybody you wish you'd heard from at the finale that we didn't get to hear from? Uh, Mari. But then he basically got to everybody. I'm trying to think. Is there anyone that he really missed? You know, uh, from the, the early people, Paul, Mari. Who else was early? Um. Casey. Yeah. Can't talk to any of them. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but you know what? Like, I barely even remembered some of them. And I mean, I, I write about this and podcast yeah. about it. I spent a lot of time on this. Uh, what Louise Johnson wants to know: the only question is, what the heck was Michelle wearing? And uh, Katie D asks: Is Michelle a secret Targaryen dragon dress? That was pretty awesome. I noticed this thing, but I didn't see the whole fur thing going down the back and everything. Yeah, the whole thing was great. It was crazy, and equally great was Will's haircut. Equally great. Yeah. Equally great. I think a big improvement. So well, you know, I think break, we should be talking about men's men's people. fashion choices and women's fashion choices. I don't want to make this. I agree. This, you know, yeah. Um, I, agree. I didn't recognize him. I'll read the next question. If Jay had seen that every idol looked the same, this is from Christian Esparza. Esparza. Why believe the last one, which was totally different? 
have the idols all looked the same? I know that they used to be trying to make the, them look different for this very reason, basically. Yeah. Like, all leading up to this. I'm not sure if they did look the same every time. If they did, I, I certainly didn't notice. And if so, I don't know. You find something in a shell that ha it's got, he had the note too. I, that was like a little bit, to me, that was a little bit like shady. Like he had the note that said, this is an idol. Like you, I've always said in the past, like you don't know anything is true in Survivor until you hear it coming out of Jeff's mouth or you read it on parchment. He had the parchment. I kind of thought that was there. That was a little bit questionable in terms of like the legality. I mean, obviously he did it. It was obviously legal, but uh, how, you how that, did you? You think that he should not have been able to make a fake cl cl thing and put the parchment in there, David? Uh, unless there was, so, I don't know. I'm torn about it because he had the parchment. Like, good for him for saving it. You know, for this very purpose. Um, you, I think it's all fair. I think other yeah. players know that those parchments exist. Right, right? And right. they know that that could be a possibility. I, would like I thought to be the like... pink was a weird choice. Maybe he didn't have another color. But I thought the least believable thing was the, the, the pink on the coconut. Yeah. I mean, maybe there was some clue on the parchment. I, I, I think the Cambodia idols had like a, a tribe logo or something to distinguish mm -hmm. them so that if you saw, oh, this is, says, you know, this has got the anchor on it. It's probably not a new idol. Um, you'd be able to know that it was, you know, um, but I don't know. And what was the, what was the purpose of that fake idol? Like, do, do you know what David was hoping to get out of it? I think sometimes it's good just to have control over the game. You right. might not know why, right. But to know that there's an unknown out there that you know about, what do you think? Was he trying to deter him from looking for an actual idol? What was the deal? I think it's probably, it's, it's probably a lot of the stuff we've talked about. Like, I think, you know, yes, maybe he's trying to deter him from looking for an idol. Maybe he's trying to make him feel confident when he's not confident, you know, just get him to screw up in some small way. You know, it's like that poker uh, dictum. Like if, if, if your opponents are making mistakes like that, that's inherently good for you. Um, but ultimately i think it comes back to what you said earlier which is that this is just how david has to play the yeah. game you know he always goes full throttle and this was a little yeah. full throttle thing to do yeah i think that's right he also has to stay like one step ahead of everybody else even yeah. if he has no clear vision of what that means yeah yeah um lance modern wants to know steven do you see any similarities between your final tribal and hannah's final tribal performance i'm gonna say i do i think that both of us misread how we were perceived and did a bad job of explaining to the jury how our our actual role in the strategy of the season and i think you know I, I i thought she did a really good job though she seemed actually more on the ball than than i think i was at my final tribal she seemed to really have like really strong aggressive answers in a way that i don't think i did um yeah yeah i was sorry i won't comment more on that we can <laughs> Yeah. Well, Sophie, this has been amazing. And, you know, you've given me so much insight and I, I'm, you know, I think everyone listening, you know, I'm so grateful to have you. Uh, any, any final thoughts about this, uh, this season, this, this finale, the reunion show? Uh, no final thoughts. I don't think so. Oh. Um, I don't know. I'm, I took a ton of notes, but I don't see anything interesting on here now. Yeah, I mean, you know, we could talk about Jay and the reward steal, but, you know, I think, you know, whatever. Oh, that's a good move, right? Good move, right, yeah, yeah. So anyway, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, you know, for all of you listening or watching live, uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow i think for uh, for the for rob's exit interview red carpet exit interviews rob's going to be talking to wiggler rob's going to have you know all the finalists and look for uh, rob and i have something that we've been planning for a little a, a little while uh, we will literally be changing the game what? Uh, quite literally changing the game so uh, the real game changers are uh, you know the survivor know-it-alls um uh, I think we're going to be announcing it later this week or first thing, I think, no, first thing next week, I think we'll be announcing it. So uh, look forward to that. And thank you all for, for uh, logging on. I'm so excited. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank so you, fun. Sophie. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.